I must stop now and warn you about what you're about to see. This is not for the faint-hearted. This is about Aldara victims, and some of their stories and images are devastating. But please don't get depressed, because later you'll meet people who have cured cancers of many different kinds, and they've done it naturally and safely. So there is a happy ending in store for you, and it will give you hope. It would have been much better if Aldera had just killed me outright in 2000. My family has been through a complete devastation, both financially and emotionally. I've had to endure nine years of pain and suffering, and I'll continue to do that uh, until I die. I'm unable to eat. My body hurts. Everywhere there's a muscle, I have pain. It's almost like there's, you know, there's a fire happening inside all of my muscles. My muscles ache, my muscles burn. What the Eldara did to me and how ill I was and the weight I'd lost and coughing up blood and my face looked like I was hit with a bus. And uh, at the end of the tunnel, uh, it just fixed nothing. I ended up with great red sores that actually broke open and started to bleed. I had oozing sores, or at least 10, perhaps 12 oozing sores on my chest. I got a great big lump in my throat during the middle of the night, and believe me, it was like a big egg on the side of my throat. I was unable to get out of bed. I felt depressed. I was in a very bad way. My whole body had been poisoned. I actually thought I was going to die. I'm very worried that I have got some permanent damage that might cause me future problems. All the Aldara victims I've talked with are fearful of the future. Of course, some lucky people have used it without immediate bad effects. But because Aldara compromises immune systems and glands, it can be a time bomb lying in wait to strike years after using it, and you won't even know what hits you. Then perhaps your immune system is so strong you won't be affected at all. Are you feeling lucky? I was feared I never had a day sickness in my life. Uh, and I couldn't believe uh, when I started taking the Aldara uh, how I went downhill and how ill I was and uh, nearly blind. I couldn't believe it. This is a common side effect of Aldara, especially when used near the eyes. Yet Dr. Katrina Dennison from Brighton, Victoria, told Terry to use Aldara close to his eyes for six weeks. I was nearly blinded by Aldara too, and my once perfect up close vision has never recovered. After the Eldara, uh, I got all my affairs in line. I got me money out to give to me sons and I, I got everything in order because I really believed that uh, I was going to die very shortly. I was so ill. Overnight, I went from Wonder Woman to, to a disabled older woman. I have reported the side effects that I've had to the Aldara cream to the TGA and I'm waiting on a response from them at this time. The TGA is the Therapeutic Goods Administration, Australia's drug watchdog. So far, the only response Mandy has received from them was a form letter assigning her a number. We really need to be careful because this is a life that doesn't seem to be getting any better and it's not fair and it's not right. Every executive at 3M should be forced to watch Mandy try to live her life. She has been desperately ill ever since using Aldara in 2000. And each year, she becomes sicker and weaker. This is my message for all pushers of this deadly drug. You are criminals. You don't like what I'm saying about you? You want to sue me for revealing the truth? I'm at Hippocrates Health Center on the Gold Coast in Australia. We're in the phone book. Come and get me. Queenslander Jen Fleming used Aldara as prescribed by dermatologist Michael Freeman. Subsequently, when 3M was introducing Aldara to Australia, he asked Jen to be the face of Aldara, representing a home state. She agreed and was flown to Sydney for a two-day promotion that incorporated all facets of the media. At this stage, I believed it was the gentler option, the softer option, the most acceptable option. 
Australia is known as the skin cancer capital of the world. Presumably because of this, 3M Pharmaceuticals spared no expense during their extravagant Aldara promotion. Jan and the faces of Aldara from other states were treated like royalty throughout their stay in Sydney. Like Jan, all had used the product previously and supported it. Did Michael Freeman and or 3M Pharmaceuticals do any follow-up studies to see what has happened to their other faces of Aldara? Well, if so, no study has as yet surfaced. Only Jen Fleming was still available to describe her experiences. The second time I used Aldara, my experience was entirely different. I became what I felt was mortally ill. I was useless. I lay around, I did no work, and this seemed to continue for a long, long time. And now I sincerely regret my role in promoting Aldara. Once Elaine's website was up and running, thousands of Aldara stories flooded in with photos of long-term damage. All reported that they had used Aldara in minuscule amounts on tiny sunspots and basal cell carcinomas. Yet their entire bodies had been attacked. People phoned me from lots of different countries, desperate for help. It was really terrible to have to tell them that there is no remedy. Finally, I was burnt out and I had to quit taking calls. Then Elaine's secretary told her about the weeping women. I couldn't say no to those women and I'm glad I didn't because that was how I learned the effect Aldara can have if used in the vagina. This is what happened. Over a period of about two months, three grief-stricken women rang me from the U.S. They described what had happened to their daughters after their vaginas had been swabbed with Aldara. All told me their daughters had suffered terribly and only death brought an end to their misery. Their doctors denied that Aldara was responsible and even threatened legal action if the women went public. Imagine being so intimidated by Big Pharma that you can't even challenge them over the death of your daughter. Fortunately, not all Aldara victims are afraid. Many are so angry that they send Elaine their stories. These are my legs after the Aldara treatment. You'll notice on this leg it goes, the wound, which is open, goes almost from my knee to my ankle and these black islands are the cancers. I was so weak I couldn't get out of bed. I really thought that I was going to die. I still believe if I had continued the 12-week prescribed Aldera treatments, I would have died. After this had occurred, it took another doctor two months to heal the open wounds before we could ever deal with the cancers that had not been affected by the Aldara. My skin hurts so badly that I can't hold my grandbabies in my lap. And the diarrhea is so severe that I can hardly leave my house. I also broke out in a rash from the Aldara and the doctor finally told me it was a side effect of Aldara. And the rash went from my chin to my feet, was all over my body. I have constant pain. Some days, doing simple tasks like carrying laundry, walking up and down the stairs is impossible. My skin's immune system has been compromised for the rest of my life. And of course, I have scarring from the Aldara. I don't understand how a drug that can be so dangerous and cause so many problems can be so freely prescribed. If it were not for the internet, Big Pharma wouldn't have anyone to expose them. Aldara is an example. Victims have no idea why their bodies fall apart after using it, and many get information only through the internet. Elaine had this problem and didn't know where to turn until Texan Richard Beasley, a fellow victim, emailed her. I went to the emergency room bleeding from the nose and mouth because of the cytokine activity that had destroyed my sinus mucous membrane tissue. Because the immune system is a very important system in the body for protection, if immune system modifiers are used, you can get bizarre results and very dangerous results, including death, damage to the brain, the liver, the kidneys, and the spleen. Richard was desperately ill. 
He was far too weak to endure the stress of a lawsuit. But medical bills had broken his family, and 3M left him no choice. Somehow, and I hand it to him, he found the strength to take on one of the most powerful companies in the world in U.S. federal court, a 21st century David and Goliath story. The legal ramifications were extremely complex, and it was essential for Richard and his lawyers to amass a great deal of scientific evidence proving Aldara's potential to kill. Their evidence was conclusive, and in January of 2003, Richard won an out-of-court settlement from 3M. A 3M pharmacologist told me that by applying Aldara to my broken skin, I had introduced Aldara directly into my bloodstream. They also told me that by doing that, it was the equivalent of being hooked up to a IV of Aldara. Dr. Herbert Slade, 3M's head doctor, actually admitted in U.S. federal court that their scientists used this exact method when killing experimental animals. This ability to spread poison throughout the entire body is the reason Aldara is known as chemotherapy in a cream. Even though Richard's five specialists now understood that he had been poisoned, they had no idea how to help him. All they could do was recommend that his oncologist contact the best research hospitals in the U.S. Mayo Clinic had accepted me and uh, they even assigned me a room. I was packed and ready to go. But after they carefully reviewed my records, they reneged. They wouldn't uh, accept me because of their ongoing research alliance with 3M Pharmaceuticals. The Mayo Clinic? They have a huge worldwide reputation for excellence. At least they used to. I was shocked when Richard told me what they did to him. The same thing happened with both the Baylor Hospital and the Southwestern Hospital in Dallas, Texas, and with the National Jewish Medical Research Hospital in Denver, Colorado. In all cases, 3M used their financial clout to stop all these hospitals from trying to help a dying man. Big medicine has no shame. Many Aldara victims are left with horrible bleeding wounds that won't heal. Believe it or not, when they appeal to their doctors for help, they are often told their complaints are all in their heads and referred to psychiatrists. This would be funny if it weren't infuriating. No psychiatrist could have helped Connie Rothwell, nor convinced her that the Aldara reaction she suffered was all in her head. She died a horrible death, 10 days after putting a speck of Aldara on a freckle. Connie's daughter, Victoria, struggled to tell her mother's story. Her whole right side of her face was off. It was bleeding. It was from here to here, bloody, scabbed. Something out of a horror movie. Parts of my mother's face, when I went to lift her, were on me. They were in the bed. That poison went through her system. Shut down her kidneys, shut down her, most of her vital organs. It went through her very quickly. My mother was taken from me way too soon because of Aldera. 